So this video today is going to be going over a hypothetical scenario based on approximate numbers I researched in passive searches online. You see, in 2017 I found out I had a tumor in my head. It was crushing my balance organ, starting to touch my cerebellum, and it built itself around all of the nerves on this side of my face. And ever since it got removed in August of 2017, I played over the scenario in my head wondering, Jesus, what would this have been like if I was still in America instead of here in Germany? So I thought I would do a little bit of research and I would make a video just kind of talking about what I went through from the time that they found my uh, tumor in my head, the appointments, the tests, the various procedures, care I needed um, up until now. And I want to run through a scenario of what that may have looked like had I been, as I stated, in America instead of in Germany. So for me, the story began I think it was around May 2017. I got up to go to work, felt hungover, if not still drunk. But the funny thing was, I wasn't really drinking the night before. Um, what I'm getting at there is then I had to go to my uh, GP, general practitioner, um, or in German they call it the Haus Ernst. So from what I looked up online, um, if you have health insurance and uh, you need to go see your, your basic uh, GP doctor, I found a variety of different rates varying on where you were and what kind of insurance you have. But from what I can see here uh, with insurance, you're looking around 15 to 25, what they call a copay, the cash that's going to come out of your pocket. So let's just go in the middle of that. And in America, Christy doesn't feel good. She feels kind of dizzy. I'm going to assume I have a job like I've always done, working in sales, some sort of retail. Um, so the should provide me with some insurance. When I think back to 10 years ago, uh, I, when I was working full-time at the car dealership, they covered half of my health insurance, nothing for my child. Um, and I think around 300, that's more than 10 years ago, around $300 was taken out of my side each month towards that health insurance. Um, so I'm going to say if I was in America when this happened here, I'd probably have some sort of sales job or some sort of deal like that. Um, and I'd have some copay to pay when I go to this visit. What I read online, the average person pays in America right now between 15 and 25. So I'm going to start with $20. That's the first appointment with the doctor to talk to him about, hey, I'm not feeling right. I'm, I'm feeling dizzy. My feet aren't doing what I want them to do is uh, what I told him, the symptoms that I had at that moment. He's going to recommend go to a specialist. An ear, nose, and throat doctor is what you're going to need to go to. Now, here too, when I was looking for what would this cost me if I was in America, the prices were really varying. Um, I mean, I found anywhere from some people have a copay where they can go see that guy for uh, 25 bucks, uh, but I did see you could be paying 144 to 425. Um, if you're uninsured, it's much worse. Uh, basically, without insurance, you can figure anywhere from 300 to 600 just to go see the ENT, which in German they call him a HNO. Uh, GP is our Hausarzt in German. Um, so yeah, it was tricky. Like I said, I saw a lot of different prices. Uh, I tried to stick with like if I was like in Pennsylvania area where I was Bethlehem. Let's again say I have insurance and they cover some of it and I get away with paying 25 bucks to go talk to the ear, nose and throat doctor like I did here. Now that ear, nose and throat doctor is going to want to do a bunch of tests. Uh, they did, uh, well first we could just start with blood work. I looked online, blood work varies from very simple to very complex can be anywhere from 100 to 300 wrong from 100 to a thousand 
they're saying for various blood tests. I think uh, in the beginning that they wanted basics. Um, and I had to get them regularly throughout before I got CTs, MRIs. They want to make sure your kidneys and liver and everything's function. Um, then in the beginning, yeah, I mean, obviously they're trying to come up with a diagnosis. So let's say I got my blood work for a decent deal. If it really goes between 100 and 3,000. And let's say I found a place to do my blood work for $200 in America, uh, and that's just to get started. Um, but he did a lot of other tests that involved, like I said, water, sounds in my ears, high-tech uh, goggles with cameras in computers on my eyes, various, various, various tests, anywhere from three to 600. So let's, let's just say 400. I'm a bargain hunter. I would have found a cheaper place to do it. Uh, yeah, if you have no insurance for a lot of these things, you could be easily into a thousand from what I read online. Now, here's where the costs start getting kind of big from what I read online. Um, you're going to need an MRI. So once they realize, you know, my eyes are showing that I have uh, balance issues, they realize this could be neurological, so they need to find out what's going on in the head area. For example, is it a tumor? So they're going to send you for an MRI. An MRI, what I read online, national average, uh, you're going to be looking to pay between 1000 and 5000 I totally believe that because my best friend needed one a few years ago. He has health insurance, American health insurance, Merck, um, and he had to come up with like 4000 something cash. I think almost 5000 if not 5000 And that was a couple years ago. So again, what I, my passive research, national average paying for an MRT, MRI in America. Yeah, between 1000 5000 So let's say I found a place to do it for $3,000 for me. Um, the ear, nose, and throat guy, uh, after we got the MRT done, they could very clearly see I had a bigger than two centimeter tumor right back here. Uh, they identified it as an acoustic neuroma tumor. It's not cancer causing, it's slow growing. Uh, but the location of mine and, and how big it was, it was, it needed to come out. So what that meant was he was going to send me to a specialist specialist, a guy that uh, specialized in this specific tumor, a Professor Sudhoff in Bielefeld, Germany. Um, so I had to go make a consultation and an appointment with them where they had all the most modern equipment uh, for the procedure that I would need in order to go into the back of my head and remove this tumor. Um, but uh, yeah, so I needed the initial consultation first that I read online said could be for something like that between 100, 250. But this guy was fancy, man. I mean, he had worked all, he told me he'd worked in Hollywood, Cal he worked in Canada, he worked in Britain, he worked all over the place. Um, so I think this guy is really top of the line uh, in his field and I don't think I would have gotten it cheap. So I'm going to go with the higher of what they're saying is what you would pay for an initial consultation. I'm going to say 250 This is the ear, nose, and throat specialist, surgeon guy. My handwriting is horrible. Um, this is the initial consultation that we're talking about, initial consultation. And... Yeah, we're going to say 250 Uh He then again did another MRI on me. So there's another 3000 He then did more tests on me, similar to those, but again with more high-tech equipment. This place specialized in my issues, so I'm going to say jack it up a little bit because capitalism is probably around 500 for the test. I believe they also gave me a CT. I was confused with the CT MRI, but apparently one can see the other better uh, in, in correlation with the iron in your blood. So uh, CT, I read online, was going to be... Uh, 
going to cost me anywhere from like to a thousand. Should say six hundred. We'll lowball it, right? After they did all of these tests, got all of their pictures inside, used all of their high tech equipment to see how my body reacted to various stimuli. Um, made a plan for a surgeon. I was informed that this uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist slash surgeon guy was going to do this in a team with a neurosurgeon. So I had two fancy pants doctors in there. Crack it into my head skull. Um, took like six hours. So again, this this is where the pricing got tricky to find online. Um, there's a lot of different hospitals, a lot of different services, and a lot of different prices. Uh, but basically, I just tried to just find something. Operation with a neurosurgeon. Mine had two. But what I found is I could consider at least for the operation I have to consider that it's going to cost anywhere between thirty thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars now you might be thinking at this point but wait you have insurance Let's not forget how American Health Insurance works. Uh, they have what's called a deductible, which means you're going to pay up until you reach that deductible point. Uh, I think I read the national average is around 4500 So you're paying all those bills up until then. But let's also not forget, just for my European friends that are watching this and perhaps not familiar with the BS that goes down in America um, and why people are dying, uh, there's plenty of procedures and medications and such that insurance will just deny. They just won't cover. So, honestly, I don't know what would have been covered and what wouldn't have with whatever hypothetical scenario that I had. But here's another factor that's going to make me go full price right now. And I shouldn't have gone to the lower number. I should have gone with the higher number. Because, honestly, up until this point, this took a couple months. This is a couple months of me being out of work, sitting at home, sick, dizzy, waiting on appointments. Couple months till I even got to this point here. Yeah, three, three, three months. I remember. I remember when I got the info for for when my uh, operation appointment was. I remember thinking, oh God, now I have to wait three months. So let's just say like three, four months going through this now. In America, um, with this job, this hypothetical job in sales that I was talking about that I would have that would help me get my uh, health insurance, um, let's be completely honest. I'm disposable. There is no protection. And probably somewhere around here, I'm fired. I'm fired because I'm not there. And all of those days I'm already missing, I'm screwed. Because I'm not getting any money because I'm out sick. It works very different over here, and I will go over that in a minute. I'm knocking stuff on the ground. So, like, I read these numbers, and it really disturbed me, if I'm honest. Um, when I started, like, thinking about what the surgery alone would have costed me, and then I'm thinking back to who I was. I mean, I don't want to sound like a... The sad oh, oh is me country song, but I was a single mom living in a trailer, working full-time job, barely making ends meet, no health insurance on my kid. This stupid tumor would have happened to me when I lived in that country. I'll tell you what, what would have happened. I probably would have gotten to about here. And when I found out what the MRI was going to cost me, that's the procedure where they found and saw the tumor. When I found out what this was going to cost me, I probably pushed it off. And I probably went the American doctor way and took whatever medication they gave me. And basically, the tumor would continue to grow slowly and I would continue to work so I could pay my bills and then I would be dead. But let's not get distracted. Okay. So, basically, operation. This there. Okay. So... After the operation, they uh, had a physical therapist come to me. He came to me, I think, two or three times. 
helped me with, no, actually maybe more than that. So I was in the of days. So he came in a handful of times to work with me on everything from my facial muscles to my balance problems. What well, data I could find online for that, for the physical therapist, was they were doing like 60 to 75 an hour. Okay, so uh, yeah, after the surgery, <laughs> another MRI to see how it's healing, you know, that there's no bone fragments. So there's another one of that, those there. Um, they gave me lots of meds. That's one thing I didn't, I left out of here is I didn't figure in meds. Number one, because here they would have been pumping me full of a lot of things. Um, here, I got very little. I woke up a few days in the beginnings with migraines. I think they gave me opioids two, three times. Other than that, it was sort of like a Tylenol thing for minor pain that I had. Whereas in America, you get a lot of hardcore drugs. But again, capitalism, the prices vary. I'm leaving the meds out of this. Um, I also had various uh, vertigo medications to try after the surgery. Just leaving that all out of here, looking at drug prices. but. Long story short on that for the German side is uh, any of the medications I got, I think one or two of them I had to pay seven euros a piece and the other ones were covered by my health insurance. So it's, it's never really like a crazy thing. So we were, we, we were after the hospital, physical therapist shows up to help me, MRI, uh, again, to make sure everything is uh, healing well, what it looks like once the tumor is out, they, they give you a copy to confirm to me that the tumor has been removed. Oh, all of my MRIs and CTs got copies. I always got copies just handed to me. And my, I remember the same time my American friends giving me like the heads up to ask for it. If you're nice, usually you can pay and get a copy of it. All of them immediately handed to me and asked for no cash exchange um, of all of my CTs and MRTs. If I asked for a copy, they gave it to me. So, yeah, I was in there for 10 days in that hospital. Uh, that got tricky, too, with the pricing. Different hospitals, different prices, different deals. But I found an average between $686 to $2,306 per day. Where do I go in the middle with that? Six hundred and eighty-six to two thousand three hundred and six dollars a day for your hospital room for this procedure that you need in order to stay alive. So we'll go one thousand. So one thousand at one thousand dollars. Wow. like figuring in the various doctors that visited me um uh, yeah i i get really angry like really i i really i literally teared up and started crying a little bit when i saw that because that there's people in america that are you get this bad news that you're sick and no fault of your damn own. And then it can lead to you losing your job at no fault of your damn own. And then it can lead you to being broke at no fault of your damn own. And it can put you on this path to becoming homeless. So let's go over it. So Germany, just want to make this clear how it works, okay? We don't get everything for free. What we have here is a social democratic system, right? And uh, everybody pays into it and everybody can take out from it. The more you make, the more you put in. Because that just makes sense. Don't be a gluttonous ass. Um, so basically, when you are employed here in Germany, your employer is paying for your health insurance. Period. He's paying for your health insurance. And when you get sick, you go to the doctor. He gives you a certificate that legally says you cannot work. And you get paid on those days as long as you follow procedure and turn that certificate in. So you see the difference here with losing a job and being on a path to being homeless.
They also have various laws. Germans will like to fondly tell you, for example, they can't fire you when you're sick. It's bullshit. They always have loopholes. Capitalism sneaks its head into every system. Um, but you are a lot safer than you are in the American system here, and they do have uh, interesting little protections for the worker, a hell of a lot more than in America. So let's just say it's, it's difficult and it's not normal for you to get fired just because you went sick and you've been out, like I said here, what, a month, two months, three months. Um, so yeah, so your insurance covered by your employer, you got these protections for when you can't be there. Um, nine times out of ten, you go back to your job once you're better. Like they said to me, they want to fix you so that you also can then once again participate in this system. That's, that's why we all get to take from it, right? So worst case scenario, you lose your job here in Germany. What happens is uh, health insurance is required. You have to have it um, because you have to live and you need it to live. So you lose your job or you quit your job or for whatever reason, you can't afford your health insurance. What you do is you go to the local government office, you fill out the proper paperwork and the government will pick it up for you until you are back on your feet. So what this means is you can always go to a doctor, rich or poor, no matter what your job situation is, you can go to your doctor. So now that you understand all of that, I want to explain that when I go to my house arts, my, my general practitioner, my regular doctor for my any day pains, I put out zero. When I went to the ear, nose, and throat, or as we call him, hot and O, I put out zero. When I got my blood work, I put out zero. When I got these tests, I have had so many tests, I can't even tell you. In my ears, in my eyes, in my balance, in boxes, looking at lights, listening to sound. I paid zero. MRI number one, two, three, I'm probably leaving one out. I think I have three or four discs here. But um, every time that I've had to go get my MRI, I have a nice little place I use not too far from where I live now. I pay, what do you think? What do you think? They call it an MRT in German, and I pay zero. So the ear, nose, and throat specialist surgeon, uh, when I went and saw him in Bielefeld, technically, I paid zero. I say technically because actually I paid for a train ticket and I got myself a hotel room because I didn't want to have to get up at five in the morning for a train ride, feeling all shitty. So um, this place where I got it done in Bielefeld, Germany, uh, I think it's like an hour or two, two hours, maybe a little more away from where I live. So I got myself a cheap hotel the night before arrived, slept over, got up early in the morning and went for my appointment. So my cost was my choice. Um, but to actually see the doctor and go into this clinic, which as I said before, was really high tech, had the most modern equipment and he's extremely well educated. He was awesome and worked everywhere. I paid zero. Um, I also was told uh, by somebody who's involved in taxes that if I had saved my uh, train tickets, I could probably get that money right back that I paid for the train ticket. So here we have another one of those MRIs I had to get. I paid nothing. More of those tests, I paid nothing. I got more CTs. That's right, you know where this is going. That operation here, this, what brought me to tears, 30,000 to 150,000. I don't know what kind of a human could hand, hand this to somebody who is sick and poor. I mean, I know we're all just trying to pay our bills and get by, but you run the hospital and you set these prices, or even if you're in billing, I don't care. 
I don't know how you live with yourself. That's serious. I really don't know how you live with yourself. That, that is sick to lay that upon somebody who's living in poverty and <laughs> fighting for their goddamn life to stay alive. And I say that knowing... I paid nothing. And I'm sure these approximate numbers would have been much higher. As I said, I had two specialists, a neurosurgeon in there. There were six hours in my damn head and they did a, a very uh, modern technique uh, where they went in through a small hole and they used like microscopic cameras to see what they're doing. So I'm sure I'm lowballing here just to Keep it straight. Physical therapy afterwards, in order for me to get the physical therapy here in uh, Germany, basically after my hospital stay, uh, they, uh, yeah, that guy that came into my room in the hospital, I paid nothing for him. He came in, it was part of my health care. Um, obviously, I needed it. I was drooling and couldn't walk right. Um, so, I paid nothing for that. After my surgery, in these last two years, I've started doing more physical therapy. Um, again, for that, I go to my GP, my house arts. I explain to him my issues. I ask him directly because I have a friend that works in the physical therapy, and I really wouldn't want to work with him because he understood me, knew my issues and my history, my body and such. Uh, and he gives me the golden certificate so that I could go and do those appointments. Um, where they're saying you're 60 to 75 an hour. I've had many, many hours in these last two years, and I've paid zero out of my pocket. There's another one of those MRIs that in America you're paying anywhere from 1000 to 5000 for. I paid zero. Ten-day hospital stay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so here's where I did get a bill in Germany. So, ten days... And I paid 110 euros. 110 euros was my bill when I walked out of that hospital. 10 euros a day. My insurance covered the rest. My insurance paid for the rest there. Um, yes, yeah, so just to sum this up, like... I repeat again, I'm not claiming to hold any facts and I'm not trying to say, uh, I don't know. I don't, everything here is approximates, but it really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. Um, especially, you know, I, I want to look into like, what is the insurance system? And I'm, I've read something on one, I think it was uh, e-health insurance. Uh, in 2016, the average American was paying around $320 a month to have health insurance uh, with a deductible of $4,358. So uh, what I pay every month for my health insurance, just because this should be also a factor, is I pay zero. I repeat, my employer pays it. And if and when I change employers, it will be picked up by the government if I am not financially able to support it myself. Another fun fact, America. Um, it seems in the research that I read somewhere around 66% of all bankruptcies in America are medical-related uh, due to medical care costs and out of work. No shit. This is why I can't watch presidential political debates. When I first moved to Germany, I used to set my alarm. So I would get up due to the time differences around 2, 3 in the morning so I could watch presidential debates every time they'd have them. And it just, the more and more I started to learn about the system that I'm in here and what's going on over there with my friends and family that I freaking love, the more and more angry I got. Because when I watch the presidential debates, it makes me so angry how many of those puppets, both sides, 
lie to the people and present health care as if it is an extremely complex and difficult subject. It's not. Those people in power are well aware of how these other systems have figured out how to set up a system where they use the people's tax monies to take care of their people, as opposed to using the people's tax money for things like wars and murdering people in other lands. Okay, I'll calm down. I'll calm down. But yeah, I just felt like this was worth sharing because I don't think, you know, everybody's really aware of what's going on both ways. Like, when I was in America and I started learning about over here and when I came over here, it was really surprising to me to find out how people were living in most of the Western world. Um, and when at the same time, when I talk with Germans, Germans ask me, like, they ask me, like, what these things cost. I, 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 I have to share with these German friends of mine. They want to know, Christy, is it really true that you go into debt when you get sick and you can get fired just because you are sick? But you are sick, you need to get better, they say. Yeah, just trying to explain that whole system there is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And I am angry because I feel like the American politicians aren't even putting on a good show. Um, the veil's being unlifted. We have more people talking about more social democratic systems in America. But the propaganda is strong against it because the money is strong against it. So I'm sharing my examples here. I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania. Most of the numbers I based it on, I tried to find locations like in Bethlehem, Philadelphia, areas near where I was from in Pennsylvania. So um, that's where I came up with some of these numbers. 30,000, 150,000. This makes me, it makes me want to vomit. Like I'm, I'm looking back to Christy 10 years ago and imagining, boof, this tumor issue hit me then. I mean, I got anxiety over bills anyway, and it's much better here uh, since I've been here. I wonder why. I wonder why. Yeah. So, I'm not doing this to rub it in your face, my American friends. I think I've spoken to a lot of my, not just German, but European friends, and they almost can't believe how bad it is, or they can't believe what's going on over there, and then they, they want me to explain it, and at the same time, a lot of times when I go to America, you know, they think, you get everything for free, and we don't get everything for free, we do pay some high taxes, but it's it's not, like, insane and that much worse than what I was paying when I was there, I'm, I'm telling you this. Um, the money is there, the medical care is there, the ability to take care of their people is there. It just quite often is going to the wrong things in the wrong people. And I just wanted to share this, to just kind of give my perspective on it and uh, make people think because this year is unacceptable. Um, I'm not even going to do the math. I'm not going to add all of this up, number one, because I fucking hate math. I hate math. But because I think it's pretty clear what these numbers equal up to. Pretty much, Christy, right around here, would have stopped going because Christy wouldn't have had the money for all these upcoming costs that were coming up. And so all of these numbers plus each other plus each other pretty much would have equaled Yeah. Just in case it's not clear. It's not cool, America. Get your act together. Take care of your people. Maybe take your interest in your bombs out of some other lands and actually concentrate on fixing your own first. Because 
I have guilt feelings because of, 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 of the fantastic treatment that I have the honor of receiving simply because I made the decision to move here. Guilt feelings when I listen to my friends and my families going into debt and saving their last pennies just to get freaking treatments and care, basic care. Um, yeah, that's going to be my video. I wanted to lay out the numbers. Thank you for watching. I feel like one of those crazy religious people that writes numbers on a dry chalkboard. I'm happy to join that community. Um, click like and subscribe. Or else. <laughs>